Do you want to know how to identify opportunities early or place a safe bet in investment? It is very simple. You have to observe and identify which are those things that are really important and inevitable part for our life. Once identified, put your capital there and stay invested. It looks so simple, right? Now let me connect this to one more line of thought. Do you want to know something is really common in most of the things that we use in our day-to-day -day life? Whether it is our hair dryer or remote or car or aeroplane, even microwave and fridge. What is that? It is semiconductor chips. Now that you have understood how important these tiny chips are, the product or the technology that we are consuming on day-to-day -day basis in our life, that is not possible without these chips. Because without these chips, it's really not possible to consume these kind of products or the technology which has really brought entertainment, comfort, convenience to our life. So now these are inevitable parts of our life. In this video, let's see how big this industry can go and who are the important players in this? What are the risks and rewards for betting on this theme? So stay tuned till the end and if you like this video, please subscribe this channel. The valuation of semiconductor is set to reach $1 trillion by 2030 alone. If you think almost all industries are heavily dependent on that. Think about banking. They need right from online communication, cloud storage or security cameras, ATMs. Even for the healthcare sector to perform the riskiest surgeries or for initial diagnosis, they are using the technologies which are enabled by this. And it is really hard to think of communication because these routers, pagers, smartphones, everything need these tiny chips. Needless to talk about computing. So now we have understood that these semiconductors, they are literally engines or the pillars of modern economy. Let's talk about the growth. We all know that our life is increasingly getting digital and COVID-19 has just accelerated the pace of digital adoption. If future is this internet or digital economy, what is the theme which is revolving around it? Of course, this one, right? Look at this table. As per the research report of McKinsey, 75% of the growth is coming from three main segments. One is automotive or electronic vehicles. Second one is computing. Third one is wireless and data storage industries. If you observe this table carefully, the first sector which is contributing to the growth of the semiconductor chips is automotive or self-driving electric vehicles. Now these are gaining traction, isn't it? So McKinsey expects that the demand will start somewhere around 6% and might expand up to 20%. Let me simplify this for you. If you are a company who is supplying some kind of raw materials or inputs to company B, which is actually into the business of manufacturing the final product. If the company B is seeing the revenue multiple or increased sale somewhere around 6 to 20 percent, that means even the money will flow towards your pocket also, right? It might make you also cash rich because the supplier is you. So the same logic works here. If automotive or self-driving electric cars are getting huge demand and they cannot function without this tiny chips, the chip industry also will go big. The second sector which is leading to this demand is computing. This is about artificial intelligence, cloud computing and the minimum growth is expected to be 6% from this side. And the last one is the data storage as well as wireless and this is so true because we are moving towards from 5G, 6G. Usually when industries witness this kind of cycle of growth, what happens? Most of the players who are there in that value chain, right from procurement of the raw materials or inputs, whoever is manufacturing and testing, assembly, even the end product, then they all try to plot the opportunities. And once they are convinced that, okay, they have assessed their own opportunities and threats, they start positioning themselves and then they will make capex or capital expenditure towards the R&D or developing their own products or the services etc and try to gain market share 
once the market share is established then translating that into higher margin at least to 30 35% is not at all difficult for this players McKinsey research report also shows that from 2001 till 2020-2022 because of this tech internet revolutions we have seen the growth of more than 300% that is from 139 to 574 billions of dollars so with this internet of things artificial intelligence cloud computing we are standing in a perfect time where we are going to witness another boom once we are convinced that the industry is set to witness significant growth the next step is to identify the players in it in the semiconductor industry there are many players in different part of value chain they may be in manufacturing the end product or testing or assembly or manufacturing of the chips also if you want to invest in individual companies it is really important for you to understand whether you can know the technical aspects of the services or the products that they are making and understand what kind of barriers of entry they have or pricing power competitive advantage or understand how really important their service or product is to the entire industry then only you can take this bet because there are many players let's talk about intel they are known for their volume and samsung is a known name asml in netherland it is known for its cutting edge technology which is known as lithography and never forget about tsmc which is in taiwan it is a famous contract chip manufacturing company which is really important player for giant companies like Apple. We, and we are all aware how Nvidia's share started skyrocketing once the world came to know that they are important players for GPUs which are required for AI, artificial intelligence, right? So it is for us to identify where we want to place our bet. Producing these tiny chips is not at all easy. It requires deep technical skills, specialization and heavy capital also. 72% of the capital is usually required for research and development alone. If that stage is succeeded, then the next 18% goes towards capex, capital expenditure, setting up the plant, production facilities, etc. That's why no country in the world could take monopoly in the supply chain it is globally scattered and specialized if you think china is leading in testing and assembly whereas us is leading in design of equipment as well as the chips so it is the big brother as far as the intellectual property is concerned whereas even the tiny country like taiwan that emerged as the chip king without their nano chips giant corporations like apple they will break down completely Realizing the importance of this, President Biden has recently announced Chips Act where he has set aside 280 billions of dollars for this. And out of that 200 billion just goes for research and development. He knows the importance of this tiny chips for America's competitiveness as well as national security. It is really important for retaining their status as a global hub. Because in 1990s, USA used to have 37% share in production of semiconductors, which is dropped to 12% now. Another risk is, many people say that this industry is highly cyclical. I completely agree. But let us break it down and understand it from multiple perspectives. See, I completely agree that we don't buy smartphone, TVs or cars the way that we consume food or our clothes, right? They are not so inevitable. They are called discretionary items. But it is also true that we cannot use our cell phone or TV more than 10 years nowadays, even in 5 years, we have to replace our mobile phone, right? So if the manufacturers or the companies which have sold this have enough data to predict this customer behavior and demand, then managing their stock and planning the production is very easy for these companies. Second argument is, earlier the growth had come from the customers like I and you, they are retail. Understanding our behavior is not at all easy. But now that has stabilized. The next leg of the growth or the demand is coming from B2B or the enterprises who need assistance in going digital and handling their infrastructure, softwares or hardware. So I can definitely say that at individual retail level, it is not that cyclical and there is next layer of growth which is coming from enterprises. 
if you observe overall tech industry it is definitely cyclical it is for us to observe the macro trends and identify the opportunities as early as we can infuse the capital stay invested and cash out when the growth disappears and before the growth subsides there are enough signs if you observe you can take note of now tell me are you betting on this new theme what are your views on this let me know in the comment section